We're gonna redo our koi tank. When we put this deck in, the whole deck is supported with cedar post. What happened, that color kind of leached into the water, giving us this yellow tint. That white sand kind of lets that yellow pop. We're trying to get every last morsel of sand out of here. So we are gonna be putting a black chip inside here. So that means any imperfection, you're gonna see on the black chip. Hey, it's Brian with Team Aquascape. Welcome back. We're gonna redo our koi tank back in here. And when I say redo, it's gonna be more of just kind of change some things out. If you guys have seen any of our old footage or if you've ever been to our koi room back in here, you'll notice our big signature pond has this kind of yellowish stain to it. Disgusting! And we want it to be crystal, crystal clear. It has nothing to do with the filtration. It all has to do with a couple things. One of those things is this deck over here. So when we put this deck in, the whole deck is supported with cedar posts. We use cedar because cedar is rot resistant and wood inside of water lasts forever. So the cedar post made a lot of sense. It was gonna be durable, we wouldn't worry about rots, no chemicals to the fish or anything like that. We loved it, but what happened, that color kind of leached into the water giving us this yellow tint. And with that white sand, if you can remember a year ago how excited I was about putting this white sand, this silica sand in the bottom, that white sand kind of lets that yellow pop. So we're gonna get rid of the white sand, which is like, oh, so painful to me but I think in the long run, it's gonna be better. So a combination of removing the sand, changing what supports the deck, which is gonna be fun to watch, and then changing a couple of things with our filter system back in here. So we've got an enormous amount of work ahead of us. Six pumps, all pushing 6,000 gallons of water a piece. We're gonna drain this thing as fast as we possibly can into over 12 500 gallon tubs. We're gonna show you guys how to safely move some of these jumbo koi that are pushing well over 30 inches. So our focus is to make it as stress-free as possible keeping all this water, filter systems and aerators for all of those tanks over there. Uh, hopefully we can get this whole thing done in a couple days and get them back into their new environment as fast as possible. So we got the pond drained down within 12 inches of water. The reason for that was A, to not stress out the fish as much as possible, and B, to help us catch these fish. It's a lot easier us getting in there with our muck boots on, with the water only being a couple inches deep and us being able to catch those fish and then hand those out to the guys that are on the outside of the tank, moving those into our blue tubs awaiting behind us. All right, so right now you can see we got all the fish out, the ponds drained down to where we can get in here and access all the sand and the gravel. First step is to move all the gravel off to the side and then come in here and scoop all the sand up and get it out of here. The anaerobic bacteria in here, there is virtually none because in the ponds when you, when you have a thick layer of gravel in the bottom of the ponds, that anaerobic bacteria gets pretty thick and you can really tell once you drain the pond, the smell kind of really hits you like a brick wall. And in this pond, there is really none. So the fish really must've been stirring this sand up and moving it around. And you can tell where Levi's at, they were, because that sand was a good eight inches thick. So it's kind of cool coming back in here a year later and seeing how the fish interact with the sand and moving all the stuff into different areas.
right, so I'm out here in Long Island, New York. So excited, here to meet my good friend, Sean Rosen from Koi Markets. We've been buying fish from Sean for a long time. I've been here before. He has some of the nicest fish. In fact, he does a live show every Saturday where he's selling a lot of these different fish. Check it out, Koi Market. Um, check it out on Facebook, he does an awesome live show. But I'm here to pick out some of the nicest fish possible for our retail store. I can't wait to share it with all of our local customers back home in St. Charles. There he is. Hey, Sean. So good to see you, buddy. Good to see you, brother. What's up? <laughs> I was just telling everybody um, about your Saturday live show that you do. What's cool. the easiest way for them to find you on Saturday? So, super easy. You go to Sean Coin Market Rosen on Facebook. Uh, and every Saturday at 11 o'clock Eastern uh, is when we do the show. We've been doing the show for two years. Awesome. Yeah. I'm here to pick out some awesome fish for our retail store. We usually get a bunch of toe size, some knee size. Yeah. Um, you've got some fish that you definitely want to show me. We have a few. Right? Some different fish in here. You're extremely anal about the health of the fish because your reputation is everything. It's a, and it's a, uh, it's a good word. For right? You <laughs> right? take this very seriously. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's, I'm, listen, I'm, I would never name names, but there are guys that would literally take the fish and sell them right out of the box. We're not one of those guys. I'm not saying to buy fish from me. I'm not saying to buy fish from X guy, but whoever you're buying from, you want to make sure that they're going through the proper procedures to make sure that the fish are healthy. Well, and this place looks like a hospital. Like it's crazy, crazy clean, super organized. Uh, some of the nicest fish I've ever seen. All these guys oh my are gosh. So these are, these are your big ones. These are our big girls here. And this is, as I said, this is a, a 13,000 gallon tank here. And the idea here is you can just come up, you can sit down, and every single one of these fish was skittish and wouldn't come near us, you know, when we first started the tank. Now they, under, they, they know who we are, they know when we're coming, and anyone can do this with their ponds. You know, as long as you're very consistent with where you sit, how you feed the fish, you move slowly, and you're, you do the exact same thing every single time. Yeah. I take my hand, I put it in the water, and I let a little bit of food come out of my hand. Each time, they'll eventually come and eat out of my hand. This fish right <laughs> here would never do that before. But so it, it awesome. just it just takes a little bit of time. Yeah. And anyone can do that. See the spray bottles? We've started, we've adapted a lot of your um, habits and stuff, but what, why the spray bottles? We have these spray bottles that are filled with 100% alcohol. You know, and the whole idea here is that we're, we're trying to be uh, as, as health conscious as possible as far as the transference of anything from one place to another. Could you have something that's going on with one tank? Absolutely. If I put my hand in here and then I go and put it in there, I can transfer it. So we do everything possible, you know, to, to spray our hands. Yep. Just like a doctor would spray their hands before they go into surgery, we were taking every precaution to make sure that we, we do the right thing for the health of the fish. That's awesome. So I asked Sean earlier if I could stick uh, my phone into the into one of the tanks. He was like, hello, right? And then we sprayed it down and he said, okay, so let me see if we can do that here. We'll spray my phone down and give you an underwater view of uh, what these fish look like because they're spectacular. <laughs> Well guys, we are probably 80% done of pulling all the sand out of here. It's taken a lot of time just coming here with the hoses, rinsing it all down, kind of putting it all into one section because we're trying to get every last morsel of sand out of here because this is white sand and we are gonna be putting a black chip inside here. So that means any imperfection you're gonna see on the black chips, which is gonna look amazing once we're done with it. But the next step is for us to pull out our deck. So what the guys right now are, they're pulling off the uh, border piece around the um, deck. We're gonna pull that off. But first things first, we gotta tear out all the lights from underneath the deck because those are all connected and those are all stapled to the underside of the deck. We're gonna pull those lights apart. Once we get the lights off, we're gonna all of us are gonna lift it up, pass it over to the other set of guys on the outside of the tank. And then the next step after that would be get those cement pillars in.
What's up? What on earth are you doing? We are makeshifting. Uh, Who's we? Me and Paul. Hi, I'm Paul, uh, assistant store manager for Octoscape. So yeah, we took his idea and, and just kind of took it a step further, I think. Our fish retailing pond, we got some tannins in the water. Yep. So we're trying to get some carbon in there to uh, get rid of the tannins. We only are very limited on space to, to put the carbon. So you've taken a centipede. Paul's idea was to take the carbon, throw it into our pondless vault, uh, the boot, I call it. And you said, well, we've got these centipedes that don't have the slots cut into them. And so you shove the carbon inside of there. Yep. Got all those bags in there. You're gonna hook up a pump over here, push the water through there. It's gotta all force through all of that carbon. And then it's basically, what'd you call it, Paul? Uh, Aquascape Media Reactor. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of putting the carbon right here, where the water just kind of gently passes through it and is kind of forced through it, to actually take it and put it inside one of our pondless vaults. And then Josh took that idea and came up with this contraption. So this is loaded with carbon all the way up to here. He's gonna hook up a pump to that, pump the water from there through a pipe back in here, force it to go all the way through this and then dump through there. And then we can maintain this solid centipede and pull out uh, the carbon as we need to. of a different scenery we're down in the warehouse right now just outside the koi room <laughs> levi chris and i are going through and we're kind of mocking up the box that we are making for our decking that's going to sit on top of those cement pillars that you guys saw earlier in the video of us uh, installing inside the pond We got water dumping back into the koi pond. It's a good feeling to uh, start having water to discharge back inside and then we can get those fish back inside their home. Levi is prepared, he has his waders on. We were able to get the deck to a good point where we could comfortably work in here with waders and not have to get, uh, keep jumping in and out of the pond. Hopefully we can keep working on that and hopefully button up and make a good dent on the deck by the end of the day today. Well, we got the deck done. It's been a couple days, so I'm glad that the deck is up and functioning. People have been on top of it. It's nice and solid. So maybe we can consider myself a deck builder, who knows? But we finished this project, off to the next one. I absolutely love how the black chips turned out in the bottom of the pond. I know originally we had that white sand and we were tossing and turning on doing the white sand versus the black chips originally. 
and we decided, heck, why not? Let's try the white stand and see how it looks. We really didn't like it just from our personal experiences. We just didn't want it. So we switched over to the black chips and I'm really glad that we made that uh, transformation. The pond is clearing up very nicely. Unfortunately, it still has a little bit of a brown tint to it, but it's a heck of a lot better than what it was before. And that was earlier from us pulling out the cedar posts and us getting rid of that cedar in the water. It's gonna help tremendously clear up this water, but we are also doing that centipede that's sitting in the back on top of the wetland. And that's pulling out a lot of the tannins, but it's gonna take some time. It's not gonna be an overnight sensation on making this thing crystal clear. But as you can tell, the fish are doing fantastic in the pond. I know it's funny, every time you walk up on the deck, <clears throat> they go flying over there and they make a bunch of waves. So it's really cool to see that they're, that they're happy and that they're doing well. You can tell that they're looking to be fed right now. It's that time of the day for them to be fed. And that concludes everything that we got going on with this, with this project. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And please let us know what you guys think about this project. Let us know what you guys think about the black chips in the bottom. If you guys like it, if you guys don't like it, um, let us know in the comments what you guys thought about this video. Stay tuned and have a good week, everyone.